Hello and welcome back to another province in northern Thailand, specifically the beautiful province of Bre. As you'll see in this video, this province is littered with incredibly unique temples, delicious food, really nice local people, incredible mountains and beautiful roads. Just the, the whole package in a small package. They say good things come in small packages, well this province of Pre is a perfect example. So sit down and relax as we really get to know this really undiscovered, unique, hidden gem of a province in northern Thailand. Just, I promise you. This is beautiful. Maybe someday when I've grown older I can see it all clear from above Looking back on it all Maybe I can see one Good morning from Doi Pa Klong National Park specifically the Stone Forest here. Now there's a national park just 20 minutes outside of the town centre and I've driven here this morning. I love the name of this province, Play. So you have to kind of go high when you say it, Play, which makes you uh, smile because of the way that you have to move your mouth. So Play, try and say Play without smiling. <laughs> so this place literally brings a smile to your face when you say its name. Anyway, we're at the National Park Doi Pa Klong. As you can hear, it's right on the main road on the way into town. 20 minutes outside of town. And um, there's a few different things you can do in the National Park, but the one I've come to is the Stone Forest Park. They have these incredible stone structures that date back to the Jurassic period. Not Jurassic, Jurassic period. And so they're ancient absolutely ancient and funnily enough they believe that they uh, well they some of them look like dinosaurs uh, including this one here which is uh, quite reminiscent of a stegosaurus I mean you have to use your imagination but actually I can kind of see that maybe that's its face and it's sleeping and there's its back and obviously some of the spikes on the top anyway there's a lovely little gravel path and if I if we're quiet and there's no cars distant bird corns, bugs and things, so it's very pleasant. So let's just take a walk around and enjoy this free, beautiful, little scenic place. So it is rather lovely, I must say, to walk around here, uh, especially with all the sounds of the nature. The, the, the sound of the motorbikes and the cars in the distance do detract slightly from the experience. Uh, just because I'm trying to imagine, so these rocks were on the bottom of the ocean. There was a river basin, there was an ocean estuary in this area, and erosion from flowing water created these you know, kind of like straight line formations that do replicate stegosauruses <laughs> you know they're thin and long so I can see why they thought they looked like dinosaurs and uh, obviously they date back as far back as the dinosaurs but um, uh, the only animal that I'm seeing so far are lots of mosquitoes <laughs> so every time I stop to take a shot um, I'm surrounded by mosquitoes so just be bring some spray if you come early in the morning. Now there's another sign over here, let's have a look. So this one says the stone, the shape of stone similar to the camel. Okay, so down there, oh I can see what they're talking about, the long neck, the head, 
and the big hump in the background. And uh, we've seen the stone shaped similar to a dinosaur and there's the camel. And um, I don't think it'll take us more than 15 minutes to walk around this. It's not massive. If this was just one kilometer away from the main road, you wouldn't hear anything. But um, there's been quite a few noisy motorbike gangs. It's the weekend and this road to get here is beautiful. Um, so it's a bit noisy otherwise. But I still think if you're driving past it, come stop and have a look. Found another animal. It's not a mosquito. Oh, he's missing a few legs, bless him. So this is a giant orb spider. They're, um, according to you guys, not poisonous or venomous, I should say, because I've seen a lot of these. And as big as and imposing and scary as they are, apparently they're not um, dangerous. And he's missing a few legs. One, two, three, four, five, bless him. So I don't know if he got into a fight with a bird or what, but, um, Still seems happy enough and he's got big web and hopefully he catches some of these mozzies that are biting me in every single bloody place. It's a little bit later in the day and the weather has cleared, thankfully. And we've come to this incredible temple, about 20 minutes outside of downtown, but in the other direction. And it's home to some incredible sculpture and artwork telling various different stories. The first thing that you'll notice when you arrive is the incredibly huge reclining Buddha image, fully painted in gold and black and green dress and um, I can't wait to get a little bit closer but also something I've never seen before is an incredible gold covered bird statue anyway let's go up to the top here I want to get a little bit closer to the statue of Buddha and here are the serpent heads this time fully gold and absolutely gorgeous and um, we'll walk up here and we'll see what we can find Okay, so this is really cool. So have a look at the feet, the soles of the feet of the statue. Now, in certain areas of the world in Buddhism, Thailand and Sri Lanka and maybe other areas, there are ancient relics and I visited a few where they call it Buddha's footprint. There's certainly one on the top of um, Adam's Peak in Sri Lanka that I visited. And recently, do you remember when I climbed that really scary mountain with the monkeys and I had to climb up the staircase in the rain and it was really slippy and really scary? Up there, inside that really ancient um, temple was a Buddhist footprint. And finally, I've seen that, I've connected the dots. The imagery on the sole of this statue, the, the, that imprint, almost footprint, was the same imagery that was imprinted on the stone in Sri Lanka and here in Thailand. So if you ever get a chance to go to a Buddha footprint or a Buddhist um, handprint, then this, is, this must be what's pushed down into the stone and pushed down into the, into the ground. And um, that's really cool. I've never known, I kind of went into the footprint and saw 
that and didn't really understand what I was looking at but now I've finally understood years later a month later that that's the soul of Buddha and it pushes that symbol and that stencil into the ground so I think that's really interesting and I don't think the whole temple grounds open to be honest because they are it is under maintenance but here on this side there is a symbol of military might you have the elephants here standing guard on this castle and there's some generals on elephant back here with swords and daggers and here's a king one of the old kings and he's on his horse and so this is um a symbol here or a, a depiction artistic depiction using these incredible statues of a battle and you've got the golden bird the incredibly beautiful reclining buddha and of course the temple is gorgeous and there's actually quite a few monks that have just turned up in a car and they're all taking selfies and they look really cool and uh, this is certainly a place to come and take photos and admire the artwork rather than say coming to pray um, like you get the other smaller more intimate temples this is certainly an artistic expression of the religion and the stories within it I've actually just come a little bit closer to have a good old look at the giant golden bird and it is not what you expect so from the back you see the tail you see the feathers and the, the, the detail is incredible and it's shimmering in the sunlight and uh, it's got mosaic as well you know quite typical with um, Buddhism artwork especially outside of temples and things however you come around to its neck now I see its neck I see its head and I'm expecting a bird's beak and whatever but there's an elephant it has an elephant's head a beautiful tusk that comes down the detail on the tusk is beautiful and then it has bells for earrings he has eyelashes and golden crown and all sorts of imagery all over him and it wasn't until I came around the corner that I noticed it and I mean I'll put you over here to give you the scale this thing is massive absolutely massive and the artist behind this the sculptor or whatever the technical term is for someone who can create this I mean artist and sculptor come to mind but maybe there's a special word for something so special because it's um dancing in the light here and the uh, the surprise of the elephant head and the tusk really threw me when I came around the corner here so never seen anything like that <laughs> anyway we're gonna get back on the road and we're gonna go to the other side of town of Prey um, and look at another geographical wonder so far so good huh but the best is coming at the, at the end I've seen something on Google Maps that looks truly special but we'll just have to wait for that things about this trip is every time I'm exploring and having adventures eventually my belly starts to rumble and the best thing about driving around Thailand is you're never more than a few minutes away from delicious food and smoking away on the side of the highway on the way to where we were going I saw some grilled chicken and som tum lady these are dotted everywhere they have everything from innards to legs and wings just choose whatever cut you'd like order a som tom as spicy as you need and some sticky rice and just sit on the side of the road and wolf it down i have to say that i think this is my favorite thing about traveling thailand is the infinite ability <laughs> to just find delicious food with a snap of a finger Okay, so welcome to Pei Muang Pi Forest Park. Now there's two interesting things about this place. The first is um, it's absolutely beautiful and it's two million years old. And so you can see at the tops of these almost like stalactites and stalagmites inside caves, except that 
Well, let's go have a feel. What are they made from? They're made from uh, quite sandy clay-like material. And they've dated the bases of these structures um, two million years ago. And uh, erosion, water, wind, rain has eroded away these caverns to create almost like a mini, a mini Grand Canyon. And uh, they really are quite beautiful, especially in this afternoon light. Can you see the blue skies? Oh, <laughs> we got lucky. The weather seems to have passed, although I've just flown the drone and I've had a look in the distance in the mountains that we'll go to next, which is um, home to some incredible jewels of the province. They seem to be in the blue skies, but there is a big storm coming on the other direction, so maybe we'll get wet again. <laughs> but anyway, um, beautiful, beautiful place. And again, 15 minutes um, on the other side of town. And the second interesting thing about this beautiful place is the, the namesake, um, the word uh, Pei Muang Pi. Um, there's a ghost in there. So the story goes that there was, um, and thankfully there's a sign in English where I parked Dreamy, which told me the story. So I'll paraphrase it for you as we walk and explore this uh, beautiful geographical landscape. Is So there was an old lady and she was in this forest, just walking around foraging, and she found gold and silver and she was blown away. So she just couldn't believe it. She just found it lying in the forest. And uh, on her way back to the village, she passed through this particular area and she felt something pull her back. And so she turned around and uh, she couldn't see anything and she was terrified. She felt the presence of a ghost pulling her back. So she dropped the gold, dropped the silver, ran back to her village and she told all of her villagers, come, 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 there's a ghost in the village, there's a ghost in the forest. And so the villagers were like, okay, let's go. And they came th down here and lo and behold, the gold and the silver had gone and they saw footprints where the gold and silver was. So they followed the footprints through the forest until they found a coffin and the footprints ended there. And so in this area, there's a very famous story here of the ghost that stole the old lady's gold and silver. Behind me, this path leads towards the coffin and it says it's 500 meters down there. And uh, I'm the only one here and it spooked me a little bit so I don't think I'm going to go down there. If there was just one other person here I'd be like, yeah, do you want to come to the coffin with me? Where the ghost? Grabbed the woman's, see there's a sign, it says 500 meters to the coffin. About 10 minutes ago, I was thinking, oh, it's so nice to be able to just come to these places and be alone and basically have Thailand as the playground with nobody playing in it except for me. And then other times I'm like, oh, I wish there was other people here because I'm scared of the ghost. Alright, so the path does take you to the viewpoint here, so let's enjoy this together. I don't know what's more beautiful, the eroded sandstone and the aggressive angles and edges, or the distant mountains in the clouds. And that spiky one in the middle there, at the base of that is where we're going next. So as you can see we're starting to lose light and there's the distant rumble of a storm so this path just takes us back to dreamy so i think we're best off just shooting over there it's about another 20 minutes we'll get there just before it gets too dark 
and uh, just wait for this place. I mean, look, I mean, this little province here, play, beautiful, isn't it? But um, like I said, save the best to last. Run you over. Hey! Hey, no me shot. So bye, mate. Hi. What are you doing? Are you fixing fixing the plants or repotting the plants? Okay. They've outgrown the old baskets. Anyway, beautiful entrance. And, uh, oh, there's the late King Ram of the Nine, and his wife, and there's the new king, and his wife. Anyway, let's go up the stairs and explore. Just looking up through the banana leaves and stuff, and you can see statues and other statues, all painted gold. And as we saw from the drone shot, I think I counted seven large golden statues and ornaments and things like that so we'll get a good look at each one hopefully on this walk and i can see the chin <laughs> of an old fella an old religious person <laughs> Okay, so the first statue that you see coming up that metal staircase is this absolutely beautiful and ginormous statue of the Buddha standing up. I really like the detail of the face and the 3D effect they use for the eyes and the nose. It's very well sculpted and um, I mean, is this the best view already? I mean, it's pretty incredible. I like what they've done here. They've really mixed the metal work with the rock and the plants and the lights. It's quite tastefully done. And there's this beautiful wooden bench here. <laughs> and uh, I don't know about you, but in my country, in England, wooden benches are for old age pensioners in the park to sit and rest and have a ham sandwich and look out to people in the park. And um, my grandfather, he'd love to say he's dead now, but he'd love this sit here with a bag of Werther's Originals, which are like these um, caramel sweets or a packet of mints. He always had 4X extra strong mints. And uh, he'd be like, do you want a mint? And I'd be like, yeah, I do actually. But they were so strong. Anyway, <laughs> I just randomly thought of my granddad because of that uh, bench, which is nice. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering, obviously this is the flag of Thailand, okay, we all know that. But if you don't know, this flag here, this is the monarchy, this is the flag of the royal family. So when you see the yellow, um, specifically the king, because uh, certain colours depict different members of the royal family. Yellow is always the king, and blue and purple, uh, depending on which queen you're talking about, refers to the other members of the royal family. But uh, yes, so you'll see a lot of Thai flags with yellow flags. Anyway, beautiful statue. Let's go to the next one without slipping. Just surrounded by amazing things. Get a closer look of the serpent. Have a look at the skin. It's actually made from pieces of mirror. So that's why it looks so shi shining and shimmery because it's just reflecting the light and they've used really carefully polished 
pieces of glass or mirror to get that effect it's incredible but this is the coolest thing so right behind me here okay now that looks like a gong M most temples have gongs and bells and uh, you ring them out um, as part of your uh, pilgrimage most people will walk a long distance and then ring a bell or climb many stairs anyway this is particularly different and interesting because it's a disused um, or repurposed uh, bomb now we're near Laos Laos of course was the most bombed country in existence especially during the Vietnam War and a few bombs fell out or landed in this area and when they were digging up this um, area to place all these te temples and statues they found it and someone carefully disarmed it took out the interior and they painted it gold and it's now a gong or a bell um, and it's got some Thai writing and uh, I think we should we, we'll give it a ring because um, this one's special oh this is heavy Is very unique. <laughs> this, look, the path comes right around this shoulder and underneath the Buddha's image chin here. Now I'm gonna keep my head low in the sign of respect and but I've got to show you this. This is, have you ever seen this before? Have you ever been able to get this close? Kind of looks like me when I'm accidentally on reverse camera mode on my phone, you know? And then you're like, oh Jesus. This is one of the special, most unique temples. Can you hear that bloody bug? <laughs> I've tried to film like 10 different things, but this guy is just crazy loud. This is my new favorite temple just because of the the variety but also just look how well it's done here this serpent you know the serpent they always line the staircases to the temples but this is up and up and up and it snakes around the artistic detail and everything these shimmering blue jewels the scales and there's ants and things crawling over it because obviously we're very close to the nature we're in it and the golden rock itself, people have pushed in coins. Maybe they've super glued it. How did they get them on? I don't want to make them fall off, but I think they might be glued. This must be a connection with um, money. If you remember a long time ago now, but when we were in the province of Nakhon Si Tamarat, we went to the, um, the cock temple, which was full of giant cocks because um, the boy who was there was nicknamed the Egg Boy and Thai people believe that he brings in fortune, wealth. So just like at the other temple in Nakhon Si Tamarat, um, let's make a blessing together if you want. Just um, think of something, I'll put my hand on the rock and I'll close my eyes and make a wish. You close your eyes and through me we'll make a wish. And uh, if you believe in it, great. If you don't, just play it along. It's okay. It's just a bit of fun. All right, so here's my hand. Here's the rock. Remember, you're kind of wishing for wealth, for yourself, for someone else. Maybe you're looking for a promotion. Maybe you're just looking to win the lottery. Um, anything. Are you ready? Okay. What do I want? Yeah, okay. Ready? I hope it comes true.
had some beautiful experiences in play and uh, put it on your list the, you know there's not a million things to do but if you just want to unwind and get away from Chiang Mai um, or get a real touch of northern Thailand without any of the tourism then come here in the next video we will go to Nan a much bigger province and um, one of my favorite I've been there before it is ridiculously beautiful and um, thankfully these dogs have been very kind to me and not been barking one bit <laughs> so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video in the province of Nan <laughs> bye